All right, guys, today we're going to be making a custom water loop using old AIO parts. So let's get the side of the case off of this thing and get started. Now what I'm using for most of the parts will be from an all-in-one cooler made by Corsair. And on this unit, the pump on it died, but the water block is still good. So we removed the propeller out of the inside of the block. And for the pump and reservoir, we're going to be using this EK Bay mounted reservoir that has a D5 pump mounted to the back of it. Now, if you have an old AIO where the pump still works, you can actually get away with just buying a reservoir. So if you wanted more thermal capacity in your system, or maybe you wanted to add your graphics card to your loop or even upgrade the reservoir, you'd be able to do this uh, quite easily with minimal purchasing instead of having to buy a full unit. And we'll go ahead and mount that up. It mounts the same way as most AIOs would with four screws going into the back plate and then some thumb screws. We're just going to tighten that on there as if we were going to fully install it. That way we can get a good idea of where everything's going to sit so we can cut our hoses to the proper length. Next we'll take the front of the case off. That way we can open up the ports for the reservoir to mount. This reservoir does mount right where your optical drives would go. So that makes it very easy to water cool on a case that was not made for water cooling. As you can see, we just have to punch out the plates that cover up where the optical gut drives slide in. All right, next we'll put the reservoir in the place where it's going to go and just tighten it down with a couple screws. That way it doesn't move anywhere during mock-up. We'll need to first put the front of the case back on it so that we could get a good idea of where the resting position is going to be. We want to make sure that reservoir is pushed all the way front to be flush with the front of the case. All right, now that we have the reservoir mounted, we'll go ahead and remove the rear fan. The AIO that I'm using has a small 180 millimeter reservoir that will fit perfectly in the back of this case where the fan used to go. So this case was not made for water cooling, so it doesn't have a big spot for a large radiator. So this dense radiator from Corsair will be perfect for this build. And make sure you remember to fully drain your reservoir before mocking up anything. So we'll put some paper towels in the inlet and outlet of the reservoir to make sure that I don't get any water on any of my components. Now I'll mount the fan to the reservoir. I know we're just mocking up hoses right now, but this way will also let us know if we have enough clearance to put the reservoir in the back as well. You never know if it's going to run into things like the water block itself or ram that's too tall or anything like that. So that just clips on with four screws and then screws onto the back with four more screws as well. So now we have to get from the 
All right, and now we'll need to measure our hose lengths so that they can go from the reservoir to the water block and then from the water block to the radiator and then from the radiator back to the reservoir to make a perfect loop. And as you can see, we'll have some little extra hose. So we'll need to go, first we'll measure the hose that will go to the reservoir and we'll cut off any extra. You can use any utensil to cut this hose as long as you cut a flat, straight cut. And then we'll see what length we need to cut for our extra hose that we had to purchase that will go from the reservoir to the radiator. We'll cut that off there. And now that we have it measured, we can go ahead and slide it on. The radiator has barb fittings on it and they're pushed to lock. So all you have to do is just push it on there and it should hold. Um, the fittings I got for the uh, reservoir are compression fittings. So those are going to be a little more tightly fitting, but we won't have to worry about that until we've fully test fitted everything. While doing this, we also need to make sure that we're not going to run into any issues. On this motherboard, the uh, hard drive, the NVMe hard drive, sticks up a little high so we have to make sure that we don't run into that while routing the cables. Now that we know where everything runs and the sizes, we just have to now connect the hoses to the reservoir. Uh, this is a very tight fitting reservoir and the hoses are a little tight on the barbs as well. So connecting it in the chassis was a little bit of a difficulty and I didn't feel comfortable connecting it while it was in the chassis of the case. So decided to remove everything and fill it up outside of the case to check for leaks and things like that. Luckily with this radiator and everything is small enough to where it will fit right through the front of the case as one solid unit. So once I get it out of the case, leak tested and everything, we can slide it back in there without having to undo anything. All right, and then we'll just slide the hose on with the compression fittings and tighten those down. So you can see the barb is on the reservoir, the hose slides on, and then the little collar slides up and screws onto the barb to lock it in. The hoses from the AIO are a little tighter because they're not a standard size, but they will fit on your standard barb with a little bit of force. So let's fill this up and turn it on and get all the air out of it and make sure that there's no leaks. Five pump has a regular small wax connector. And then it also has a CWM signal for a fan signal. And you can see as I move it around, the bubble's coming out. We just want to make sure that there's no air in the pump. And you can see that pump is releasing all the air out of it now. Air being in the pump will create cavitation, which will burn up the pump. Also will prevent water from being pumped through the system. So once we get all the air out of the pump itself, then it will start getting all the air out of the rest of the system. And as you can see, the radiator is starting to get the bubbles out of it 
So we'll have to fill this up just a little more. And we just leave it running so that it can start to cycle all the air out of it. Now once all the air is out of the system, you'll want to move some of the parts around because there will be air trapped in little nooks and crannies throughout the system. All right, that actually worked out very well. You can see there's no air bubbles here. And while you're doing this procedure, you want to make sure that you don't run the reservoir completely low because then you'll introduce more air into the system and you'll have to start over from scratch. So, as you can see, as I'm moving the reservoir around, air is coming back into the system because there's air that is trapped in that reservoir. Once we get it all topped off and make sure everything is bled, I'm just going to leave it running for a little bit on the bench so that we can confirm that there's no leaks. Yeah, as you can see, as I tilt it up, air coming out. And I'll just let it sit there for a while. Uh, now that it's been a while, let's go ahead and drain all the water out of it. And then we'll install it into the computer for the last time. Now that I have it installed, I'm going to go ahead and put the fluid in it that I have chosen. I went with a cryofuel green. Uh, didn't need to go with anything special because the inside of the case isn't going to be looked at, so it's just going to be in that reservoir. So we'll fill that all the way up and then turn the pump on, maybe give it a little bit of a shake back and forth, make sure we get all the air out of that pump before we turn it on. sure get all the air out of the pump itself. At this point I've already mounted the water block back in and the radiator and all the hoses have been ran properly and I still have it hooked up to the test power supply so that we can cycle it on and off as needed. All right, and as you can see as soon as I turn this on it'll start draining the fluid right out of the reservoir. And there it goes. So we'll turn it off real quick before it runs dry. And add some more fluid to it. And while we're waiting for this to bleed out fully, if you guys have any questions or concerns, feel free to leave a comment down below. I usually answer all the comments uh, that anyone has. Uh, at the time of editing this video, I've had this computer running with this reservoir, uh, this setup, for about a year. And it's running a Intel i7 6-core processor, uh, slightly overclocked to 4.2 gigahertz. And even with that small radiator, I still run usually about 52 degrees Celsius with this setup. So all in all, I think a pretty decent setup for the cheap. Uh, I was given the AIO because it was a broken unit. And all I had to do is pay the 150 bucks for the reservoir and the D5 pump. In the near future, I'll be upgrading to a new case, which will allow me to actually put a reservoir and hard tubing and all that in there. So once we get that... Uh, up and running. I'll record that and uh, post a video with that here shortly as well.
and it leaks very easily. As you can see. And as you can see, I got some paper towels lining the graphics card so and that if for any reason there was a leak that occurred during testing, that would get caught. And that's also the beauty of having green fluid. It'll show up right away on those paper towels. And uh, while we have it running, we'll go ahead and mount the reservoir the full way. Make sure everything fits properly. And let it run for a few minutes before actually turning the computer all the way on. Now, with using this AIO from Corsair, the Corsair RPMs, the uh, temperature sensor, and even the light on the front of the Corsair water block all still works. So I can use Corsair software to monitor the water temperatures in that block and change the colors on that water block if I need to. Now we'll get the front of the case back together so that we can mount the reservoir flush with the front panel. And it just requires pushing it in and putting two screws on each side just like you would with any optical drive. think it is perfect. For computers that weren't meant weren't built for silicon core screwing. And there you go. Perfectly flush with the case. And you have yourself a custom water loop using an old AIO and a couple other odds and ends. And just to make sure that all the air is out of the system, it's always good to pick up your system a little bit, rock it back and forth, make sure all the air is out of that radiator and tubing. And then other than that, you are good to go. And just like that, you now have budget-friendly custom water loop. If you like the content, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one.